Zook, zook some food. Oh, they in a club. Australian man Michael Luria is hosting a party celebrating his son's bar mitzvah. Toto mitzvah's a massive oh. totem, exactly. His family home overlooks the sparkling Dead Sea. But his presence here is widely contested because Michael Luria lives in a Jewish settlement in the West Bank. So nice. How many families now live here? There's about 75 or 80. This settlement is called Panay Kedem, and not only does Mr Luria live here, he also founded it, the only Australian to ever do so. I took that route of saying, yeah, we're going to try and do something, you know, improve the population over here in Judea and Samaria. Judea and Samaria is how religious Jews refer to the parcel of land recognised internationally as the West Bank, the Palestinian territory under Israeli military occupation. According to international law, settlements here are illegal. The international law is very clear. You cannot take um, a citizen of an occupier and move it to an um, occupied territory. But the Israeli government says its settlements are legal according to their laws, and Jews like Michael Luria believe the land was given to them by God, so Palestinians have no claim. The Arabs can stay here as long as they understand that the Jewish people have come home. Since 1967, when Israel captured the West Bank, it's embarked on a mission to increase Jewish numbers in Palestinian territories. As new settlements have been approved year on year, the settler population has grown to nearly half a million people. This year already, a record number of housing units have been approved in the West Bank, in line with the Netanyahu government's plan for massive settlement expansion. Most settlements are guarded by Israeli soldiers or with checkpoints, a system that can restrict Palestinian movements. The land grab also deprives some Palestinians of their property and livelihood. In the shadow of the Panay Kedem settlement, Palestinian man Ahmed Abu Shanab is visiting his farming land. As we're filming, a settler approaches and calls in the army to question the Palestinian, despite Mr Abu Shanab doing nothing wrong. This is our land, he tells the security. He says he faces this type of intimidation every time he comes, and it's now made him afraid to visit. All the time make a problem for us, because they want to see this land without Palestinian. But Palestinians are, he are here. We are here. After half an hour, the settler and army leave. They decline to be interviewed. In recent months, settler violence against Palestinians has increased in intensity and frequency. Palestinian homes and cars have been burned to the ground alongside physical assaults. Some settler attacks have been in retaliation for Palestinian-led violence, including the killing of settlers. But Palestinians say they're being intimidated by settlers into fleeing the land they want for a future Palestinian state. Those are not, you know, a few bad apples, as, as some would like to say. It is a fully supported and funded phenomena uh, by the state. Most, if not the majority of people who are so-called settlers um, a law-abiding citizens who are very right-wing, who believe that the land belongs to them, who believe that we should be here. Last month, the Australian government issued a rare statement expressing grave concern about new settlement approvals and calling on Israel to reverse expansions. But under Israel's most right-wing government ever, that won't happen. Further escalating tensions here and eroding hope of peace. Alison Horne, ABC News in the West Bank.